Today, you are going to get a front row seat to the memorable Springbok career of Audrey Geldenhuis. Audrey, welcome to Front Row Rugby. Oh, thank you. Thank you for hosting me on your, on your program. And uh, it's nice to meeting you. Likewise. So, Audrey, um, before we get started, I want to take a look at the trivia question for today. At the 2023 Rugby World Cup, South Africa will be in Pool B alongside Ireland, Scotland, Romania and which other country? Now, if you know the answer to the question, you can put it in the comment section down below. And we'll also find out if Audrey knows the answer to the question, but we'll do that at the end of our conversation. Audrey, I had Corne Kricher on this show a couple of months ago, and he told me when it comes to the toughest opponent that he ever came up against, he mentioned guys like you and Ilandre van der Berg. And he said that he doesn't think the guys from the Eastern Cape, he doesn't think they come any tougher than that. Why do you think that is? Well, I think uh, we just uh, like to be com uh, competitive. And, uh, you know, if you between the four li white lines, uh, then, uh, then it's uh, like, a, uh, like, uh, like a French saying, a combat. You know, it's like uh, making... Uh, you want to play a good game and, uh, you know, you don't want to come second. You also want to want to be on top. Absolutely. So, Audrey, let's go back to 1992. It's just been announced that South Africa are returning to international rugby after many years of isolation. How confident were you that you could make that Springbok side? You know, at uh, that stage, uh, you know, I, play, I played, uh, you know, a good level of rugby and, uh, and uh, you know, I just uh, finished the season in France uh, with uh, TARP, the rugby down in the south. I was uh, quite confident, but, you know, it's always in the hands of the selectors who they're going to select for the team, you know. And how were you feeling before that match against the All Blacks? I, know, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, very jittery and, uh, you know, I, you know, it's my first game on international level for the Springboks and uh in front of your home crowd and uh yeah well i i i, I looked forward to the game you know and uh, i just want to give my everything and uh and see where south africa the rugby you know our level uh, were you know hey if you're enjoying this video why not hit the like button and the following week against the Wallabies, how difficult was it in those very wet conditions at Newlands? Yeah, no, yeah that was uh, yes, that was difficult, you know, because uh, uh, we not uh, you know we we know about you know wet the conditions are, but we are not used to go, to play in, a, in 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 a lot of games that uh, been played in 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 rain conditions, you know. But uh, you know, well. We we took uh, we took the game to them and uh, you know uh, well, you know because uh, we've been out of uh, isolation for quite a long time you know uh, uh, at the end of the day uh, we lost the game you know. I had Ian McDonald on the show as well a few months ago, and he told me that one of the problems that you guys had in 1992 was that except for Nas and Donny, there weren't really a lot of guys there that had experience of international rugby. So it was very difficult to have conversations or get advice from senior players. What was your experience like of that? That was a problem, uh, you know, regarding uh, the players that uh, that's, uh, that's uh, experience. Uh, there was only a little bit, as you said, you know, Nas and Donny, and, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, we had to rely purely on on our, uh, you know, uh, rugby strength and the way we playing, uh, we played at uh, the, the provincial uh, provinces. And then we went to France uh, for that tour at the end of the year. We won the first test match in Lyon. How special was that? Uh, that was, uh, you know, cherry on the, on the cake, you know, uh, winning a uh, a test match against France on on their home soil. Uh, it was quite tough, you know, but uh, we we enjoyed the the win afterwards, and uh, yeah, no, it was all the players was happy. A lot of the players have told me uh, that I've had on this show that that tour was actually very difficult. And they mentioned things like the food, uh, maybe the training facilities. You know, you'd pitch up at a training ground, but actually the scrum machine would be somewhere else, a different part of the town or the city. Uh, they weren't happy with the hotels and the accommodation. How did you find it? 
you know, from, from my side, you know, you know, I thought uh, they they made it uh, very difficult for us. Uh, you know, we we travelled the whole of France from down up in the north to the middle, down to the south, and then uh, uh, you know the hotels we stayed in wasn't uh, wasn't in good condition. You know, the food they they uh, they gave us so was not on a on a, on a on a on a good level. You know. Uh, you know the the one the Wednesday you will play you 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 will play a game down down in the south, and then uh, the Thursday morning then you'll pack up and uh, in the bus and then you will travel up to the to the north, and the next the next week you will travel down to the to the to the south again. And then you know, up and down, up and down. You know, the, the games wasn't planned in you know close vicinities that uh, to, to 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 make the travel uh, a less as a lesser effect. You know, it was yeah, it was difficult. You know, I've also heard that there was one hotel where the beds were actually too short for guys like yourself and Adolf Milan. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was a bit difficult, but. Uh, Ah, well, we we made we made a plan of some uh, uh, you know switching coffee table uh, put coffee tables at the end of the of the beds and uh, yeah now well we made a plan to to sleep comfortable. It's an incredible story actually when you consider how rugby has become professional uh, in in the current era. So Audrey, um, as it turns out, the second test against France, we lost that one in Paris, and then that also happened to be the last test match that you played for the Springboks. How disappointed were you that it ended there? It was a bit uh, sad uh, for, for uh, you know it was just it was a sad ending. Uh, you know uh, the following week uh, or the f- they uh, they went to uh, to play. It. To play a, a match against England, a test match in in, in London, and uh, yeah, no, it was a bit sad, but uh, you know that's that's life, you know. Uh, you know, injuries is, are part of the game, you know, and uh, you can't do anything about that. I know that you also went to New Zealand in 1994. You were on that tour. Um, so, given that you were still part of the Springboks squad, the larger squad, as it were, uh, how hopeful were you that you would get another chance in the starting 15? I also played a good level of rugby, and uh, but uh, you know I was only selected for the for the week uh, because of uh, maybe they think uh, uh, I'm I'm a bit uh, too too rough on that stage on the game on the on the field, and uh, you know they're afraid of uh, get, uh, I'm getting uh, uh, yellow cards or red cards, and uh, they're gonna send me off for you know. I think that was the main reason, yeah. Okay, so on that note then, I've got a story that Tian Strauss told me. Uh, he says that he thinks it was a midweek match in Rotorua. Uh, maybe you'll remember better. Uh, and there was a little bit of a punch up and Tian called you guys aside. He was obviously captaining the team on that day. Uh, and he said, listen, guys, we need to just, uh, you know, calm things down a little bit. And then it might have been a line out, the very next line out. Uh, you punched your uh, opponent and then he called you aside and he said, listen, we just spoke about this. What's going on? And you said, no, listen. I've just noticed this guy is playing with low-cut boots, and that is extremely disrespectful. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, I can remember that like like in yesterday, you know. <laughs> no, no, well, you know that's, uh, that was a funny, funny, funny story, and you know, funny moment, you know, on a, you know, in the game, and uh, yeah, no, I enjoyed uh, um, Tian. He was a, a lovely person a lovely you know good player and uh, you know it's just, uh, that was a good story yeah Absolutely. Uh, Audrey, obviously in those days you could get away with a punch here and there and that sort of thing. Do you think that it made rugby more enjoyable in those days? Yeah, yeah I, I think yeah you, you know if you uh, if you had the scuffle on, uh, on on the field you saw you saw the, 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 the problem out on the field and you know and afterwards, uh, you know, you're having a, like a beer with your opponent and have a, like a laugh and, uh, well, you know, uh, that, I think uh, that afterwards was lucky to, to uh, just sort everything out over a beer. 
So, Audrey, obviously many kids dream of playing for the Springboks, and I think that they think that when they get there, they're going to play for a decade or they're going to play a hundred tests for the Springboks. But in many cases, that doesn't happen. Uh, take, for example, you. You only played four test matches. What would your advice be to youngsters? They must enjoy the moment, you know, because the moment is only, only it can be, can be three years, it can be a couple of games, it can be a couple of seconds, you know. And I think uh, they must enjoy the moment and uh, enjoy the rugby itself. They must train hard, they must give them everything and, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, it can be, as I said, you know, for quite a couple of years or it can be for, for, of, uh, of a couple of seconds, you know. Exactly. So, Audrey, who was your toughest opponent? Yeah, well, you know, there was a couple of, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, Rudy Visaghi was a difficult uh, opponent, you know, because, you know, he's quick and, uh, you know, he's a, you know, a large, large in the posture. And, uh, you know, there's another guy, Andre Buta, he also played for Natal. And then, uh, you know, uh, Ian Jones, who played for the All Blacks, Lock. You know, he was also uh, difficult, uh, you know, opponent. But overall, you know, uh, you know, there was no. If you if you pitch up for the game and uh, you think uh, you're gonna have an easy game, uh, then you've got it wrong. In those days, you know, you must uh, every game, you must be 100 percent motivated, and uh, you know. Uh, you must pitch up for the game, otherwise you're going to get uh, uh, a lot of points against you. Quite right. So, Audrey, uh, do you regret not having had the chance to play professional rugby? Oh, no. Well, you know, I enjoyed my time uh, playing rugby in the, the, the uh, amateur era. There, there was a time that we received some uh, money for games in a smaller amount, you know, but... Uh, you know, if I want to uh, have my life over, you know, I will, I will choose it again like it was, you know. I, w I went to play Italy. I played a season in, uh, in, uh, in uh, North Harbour, just outside uh, Auckland, with uh, Buck Shelford as, as a coach. He was also my coach in, in, in Rome, in Italy. So yeah, no. Well, you know, I rugby was was good to me. I, you know, I, I saw I saw the world uh, through uh, rugby. You know, it, it didn't uh, cost me a cent to to see all the places. You know, you know, and, and, and I've been uh, grateful for, for grateful for that. Audrey, this channel is specifically about Springbok rugby, but I would like to localize it just a little bit. You obviously played for Eastern Province, and if we look at some of the players that have come from that region, you know, Dani Gerber, Heinrich Fultz, Henny Leroux, uh, more recently Rassi Erasmus, Sia Colisi is from that part of the world as well. But Eastern Province have never won the Curry Cup. Why do you think that is? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, we, when I played for Eastern Province, we came quite close to playing in a, in a uh, quarter final of the Curry Cup. Uh, you know, I think uh, maybe you know there wasn't a, a big squad of good players. For instance, if you're if you're getting an injury or something in a in a vital position, there wasn't a lot of players that uh, stood in the queue to to to, to take up take up the the the, the injury players. And uh, you know. Oh, well, uh, we had we had a lot of we had a lot of facilities to to uh, to train and all that stuff. But uh, ach, I think uh, the big one was uh, the uh, players' depth. That I think that's uh, the, the the big one. Sure. So, Audrey, a little bit earlier we were joking about that story about the low cut boots. Is there another or a different funny story that you can share with us? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, uh, for the moment, just and I can't. Uh, okay, yeah, well, we 
uh, we played uh, those days. We played. I don't know which uh, year was it. In uh, 1989, 1990. I think it was 1990 when I moved to to uh, to Eastern Province. Uh, on that stage, we still played that North South. Uh, the Derby's, Derby's, uh, um, and uh, the main sponsor was uh, on that on that stage was Imnet um, uh, Multi Choice, and normally in the beginning of the the the, uh, the tournament or, or the games, uh, they said to us uh, the the winning team uh, they're gonna give the, every player a decoder. You know, on that stage, uh, you know, the, the money wasn't. Uh, you know, was was uh, not that much uh, by the salary, and uh, you know, if you can get a, a, f- a decoder for free for, for winning the game, you know, uh, that was a, a big one. And at one one stage, uh, the, the North team scored a try, and uh, me and uh, Patterson stood at, uh, behind the the, the the trial line, and I keep on asking him. You, Tell me what is the score. Tell me what is the score because I can't. I don't know what is the score because, you know, I, I was just afraid we're going to lose the game and then I'm going to lose the decoder. <laughs> That's great, uh, Audrey. What are you up to these days? And I've got my own cabinet making business. Uh, I'm installing uh, kitchen cupboards, uh, bedroom cupboards, uh, any kind of cupboard you uh, the, the client uh, wants. You know, I design it and cut it and you know uh, assemble it and uh, prepare it for installation. Sounds good. Audrey, just before we wrap up, here's another look at that trivia question again from earlier. At the 2023 Rugby World Cup, South Africa will be in Pool B alongside Ireland, Scotland, Romania, and which other country? Do you know the answer, Audrey? (laughs) Yes, that's a tricky one. Uh, Isn't the All Blacks? No, the All Blacks are actually in the other pool alongside France. Uh, the other team in our pool is going to be Tonga. Oh, okay. No, well, I'm, I'm not on the ball of uh, the pool games, you know. No, I think it's also the kind of thing that you memorize or you, you come to know it closer to the time of when the World Cup actually starts. Um, Aldo, let me say, it was lovely. It, it was lovely having you on Front Row Rugby today. A uh, very, very enjoyable conversation. And hopefully we can have you on again in the future. Oh, no, thanks for, for hosting me. Yeah, no, it was lekker. Uh, if, you, if you need uh, anything in the future, don't hesitate to, 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 to contact me and, uh, you know, yeah, well, uh, I'll have another chat to you. Last time on Front Row Rugby, I had former Springbok Centre Tobani Bobo on the show. You can go and have a look at that video. It's appearing on your screen right now. Next time, former Springbok hooker John Allen will be my guest. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, why not spear tackle the like button? You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any content from Front Row Rugby. See you next time.